Hello there! Long time no video, but now there is finally something I'd like to cover in some videos. WRC Generations has been released, and since this will be the benchmark against which the first Codemasters WRC will be compared against, and as well as the best of album of KT Racing's WRC era, I got my hands on it to see for myself. These are my first impressions, the good and the bad things that sprang up to me in the first couple hours. Beware though, I look at it from a sim racing perspective and will compare a lot to Dirt Rally 2.0. What you see here is running on the PlayStation 5 and I drove with my Thrustmaster T300 RS. Some of you might ask why PS5, but that has two unrelated reasons. First, the EA takeover of Codemasters and I will only consider getting the next game on PS5 to avoid Origin and other EA infrastructure. That company has a horrible reputation for me. And second, the easier sim setup at home. With hooking up a console rather than a PC, this is a good test if sim racing on console is viable for me. Anyway, let's get back to WRC Generations and start with the bad impressions. At first, I thought the force feedback was total garbage, as I could hardly catch or maintain drifts or feel what the wheels were doing. But this relates to bad default settings, as I found out. If you have a force feedback wheel, go into the settings and take a look. This is all defaulted for casual Mario Kart racers. Raise the two dampened forces up to 100 and lower the artificial centering force to zero, or at least close to zero. Then take a drive again and you'll suddenly have a similar feeling from the cars than in DR2 or in real life. Now the wheels turn in the direction of movement rather than turning straight all the time. So the bad impression here is the bad default setting potentially putting off sim racers who just try out the game. Next, I'd like to talk about the ABS. I tried to drive without ABS, modulating braking myself to have better control. But that didn't work well. I have little feel over, the, over what the wheels uh, were doing and when the wheels are locking up, especially on gravel, since you cannot hear it in any way. Many braking zones felt like pulling the handbrake and sending the car into a spin, even at, lower, uh, even at slower speeds. Turn on the ABS again and it went away. I need more time to say if the ABS works strange or the brakes and the simulation of locking up, but something felt wrong there. Try turn on ABS again if you have problems spinning out. This leads nicely into the next point. I said you can't hear the brakes locking up on gravel. Truth is, you cannot hear anything on gravel. There is zero sound of gravel hitting the wheels or the underbody of your car. It sounds like you're always driving on snow or dust, even in Argentina or Turkey. This honestly breaks some immersion for me, as it is a clear tell to your brain that something isn't right. Also, you have a hard time hearing the state of your car in a slide. In Dirt Rally 2 you can hear how steep and fast you are sliding as it is modulated by the gravel chip and sound on the car. WSC Generations has nothing of that. Another thing of uh, uh, immersion is the rain, which looks, well, bad, really bad. A uh, drying road in the sunshine looks horrible and flickering, and the rain on the windshield is not looking like it is pouring down. You can actually keep the wiper off and still continue driving fine. Strangely, <laughs> then you see that they actually simulate the g-forces on the drops, which is certainly a nice touch. But in comparison, you're not, you're just not as hindered by the view as you should be when it is raining. Next is the general graphical quality. I mean, it, 
it still looks worse than W uh, the, than than Dirt Rally 2. Y you might argue that's not the most important thing in a sim, but it it adds immersion. And the telling sign of how optimized this engine is is that you can only run 2K re resolution at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5. You can pick to go up to 4K, but that will crunch your frame rate uh, to just 30 FPS. Uh, my PC has actually less power than my PS5, but there I can run DR2 at 4K at 60 FPS, while it still looks better too. Definitely a bad impression of it. Um, another one are those sounds of some of the cars. Um, some sound decent, but some others sound like they recorded the kitchen blender. It is a complete mixed bag. I drove this Lancia in uh, Wales and listened to it. While the WRC Yaris here actually sounds kinda decent. For me this limits the cars that I actually want to drive. Side note here is also that some noises are only in the cockpit view, like hearing the whining gearbox. Compare this, which is the WLC uh, 2 Hyundai i20 inside and outside. I think you see what I'm getting at. So, but let's mention the good impressions too. I critiqued the rain visuals, but the physics and mechanics are actually nice. Weather is dynamic, it changes throughout a stage. The road can dry or it can start raining and you feel the difference in driving. The physics in general make a good impression uh, after you've dialed in the settings. The tarmac physics are actually more realistic than DR2, and the rest also feels plausible. I can drive fairly quick times with my DR2 acquired skills. Some slow corners on loose surfaces still feel strange, but I need more investigation to tell exactly why. Overall though, the cars drive consistently and controllable. It is a much better impression than when I tried the uh, demo of the last WRC game. Next, uh, it's minor, but you can actually select tires for each individual wheel. This allows you to mix and cross mount tires, for example to have slicks and studs for Monte Carlo on your car. This brings me to career mode, which is definitely a highlight of this game. The team management and event structuring is really deep. You have to care for the needs of crew members, sponsors, car maintenance and money. With visually looking into a racing garage, reminding me of the trailer park times in Dirt 2. When you start a rally weekend, you also need to pick how many tires of which kind you gonna take with you. And those are then the only options you have in that rally. Make sure to have a meteorologist early to know if you need to take wet tires with you. Now then, there are special events, which I would count separately. In career, these loosen you up from the car, from, from your actual individual car, um, giving you like a damaged car in, in very serious uh, weather, or like uh, historical uh, legend car to fill, fill some target. There are also challenges in the main menu completely outside of Korea. These are nice short tasks which are much quicker than driving a full rally and give a welcome sparkling to the experience. Next I want to mention the penalty and damage system which works really solid. Even though it is visually nothing to write home about uh, but when you're in a service park, you can repair some parts gradually, but some others you need to replace completely, which gives you a nice uh, play to decide, a play of decisions, what to fix and what not. Then uh, there is uh, penalties and perma crash, 
a setting and career, which can make sure that every attempt um, in, in any event is your only attempt. No restarts, no rewinds. Even if you quit a stage and return to main menu during a career event and then re-enter career, you'll receive a flat 10 second penalty for actually quitting out of that stage. This really trains the uh, rally mindset of the risk and reward sense of needing to balance the, the quick on the edge driving with actually getting to the finish. Uh, and finally, my best impression of WC Generations, the rally locations and stages. There are so many locations, I still haven't tried all. And most of them have at least one 25 km stage that takes around 15 minutes to complete at full speed. Those stages are then also nicely designed with different areas you drive through and many different features to encounter like wide roads, narrow paths, gates, villages, bridges, chicanes, cobblestone, broken asphalt, hard gravel. Most stages feature a mix of several features. Compare that to Dirt Rally 2 Spain or Germany, where the whole event consists of exactly the same surface type and road width. Uh, and in WRC Generations, all of those locations are also integrated into the game. The career features all locations, even those no longer in the WRC calendar, at least for the Between the Rally challenges. So my favorite rally so far is definitely Sweden. There, the immersion break from bad rain and missing chipping rocks sound doesn't matter, because it is on snow. And the stage design is challenging, mixing high speed, narrow fast areas with tight and winding sections, forming into a great flowing experience once you get into the rhythm. So, overall, it at first impression feels a bit like a sidestep compared to Dirt Rally 2.0 so far. Many things that seem worse, but also other things that are better. I am cautious to say if I can, if, if, if it can me give me any long-term motivation though, since the immersion effects really pull me out a bit. Although gravel sounds or rain effects might also be things that could be patched, who knows. In general, I am having fun. It fuels my rally passion and tackling the great stages at so many locations brings a smile to my face. At least, if the car I picked sounds better than a lawnmower. I'll probably also make a larger comparison video later, when I got a few weeks of experience. But don't expect a gaming review, more something like a part 2 of this video, a dedicated comparison against Dirt Rally 2 for sim racers like myself. Hope you got something out of this so far, and can judge for yourself if, if this game is worth a buy for you. See you all next time! Flat over bridge 200. Cheers. Left five hard break into square right 30. Into left four 200. Right three and caution hard break for square right. And left three 30. Right five hard break for hairpin right 150.